What up, T Squad? Me and Mo are back. <laughs> Say hi to Monique. She's here, you guys. Update the people on your life. They thought you was gone. They thought we weren't friends no more. There's nothing to update. <laughs> I'm still me. I'm still. I don't even know what Same I had going on back then. Like, yeah, we haven't done this since 2019. Yeah. We surmised. Yes, but she's alive and well. And let's get into our first question. Your nays. It says, "Hello. Uh, my question is: I'm 25, almost 26. November 26 is this person's birthday." And I want to know when or how do I actually get into the dating scene? I don't have a long dating history. Only been in two serious relationships. One was two years, almost three on and off. And the other relationship with eight months, never had schmecks in that relationship because I'm very different than most people, especially black men. I'm celibate. I don't give my body to a lot of people, not judging people, but I am different for one. I'm a believer of Christ and understand what schmecks is and especially what it means to me. I only been with six people total in my life. Someday want marriage and children, not in a rush, but that's my goal. I work full time and have a busy life and don't know how I could fit dating someone or going on dates in my schedule and I don't want distractions. So <laughs> do you think I should just jump out in the dating pool and have fun or stay focusing on the bag? Stay focusing <laughs> on the bag. <laughs> stay focusing on the bag. I'm telling you like I don't think you're doing nothing wrong. It's kind of like everybody's on this path, it seems like. Mm -hmm. The whole celibacy kick, nobody really wants to date. Nobody got time for, like, wasting their time. Mm -mm. Um, this is definitely a good time to be focused on you and getting yourself together and prepping yourself for your later life. And then the right person will come along. But don't be in a rush. Yeah, I agree with um, Mo. Because, I mean, you said in here that you don't even have time to even fit dating in your schedule and that you don't want distractions. So you pretty much answered your own question right there for me. I would continue to focus on your career, your job. Um, and if dating somebody comes along, then I wouldn't stop it per se, but I would just be open to the universe, but I wouldn't be actively seeking it probably. Right. And then, Let's say you get out there and you meet somebody that's worthy and you you don't have time. That wouldn't be fair to them. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to start something that you cannot finish. And child, it's ghetto out here. It is. So. That's what I've been up to. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it I is can't, ghetto. I think I, ain't, I have not been like out there six years. And you know it's even longer for me. So... You're on the right path. I would. You're in your 20s. Focus on your career, your money, and all of that stuff. And a man or a woman is going to come, child. Don't even be worrying about that. You got time. Yeah, you, you do. Okay. Okay, next question is. Hello, Keisha and Mo. Hi. I need you guys' help on trying to navigate how to deal with a cheater. My boyfriend and I have been together for five years now. We live together and have two children together. Earlier this year, we had a serious conversation that led him to admitting to cheating on me while I was pregnant with both of our children. Damn! Wow. I'm confused to whether to give him another chance or not. I also want to know if I move on, how do I navigate co-parenting without taking things personally and boss up on his ants and find me again? Thank you so much for your time. Girl, leave that man alone. <laughs> I was trying to find because I forgot. Like, YouTube is so different now. Like, it's a lot of stuff I can't say. No, you can say it. You just can't cuss. And, and then okay. you got to, like, say the, the D yeah. word, schmuck, schmex. I'm going to just say man, man. Just leave him. Yeah. Like, don't ever tolerate. Don't ever give somebody, like, multiple chances to play in your face. He did it twice while he was pregnant. While you were pregnant. With his kids. Like, that's crazy to me for you to consider, like, 
even been in the same household. Like, it should be an open and shut case. However you feeling, like, right at this moment. Why? I don't, I don't understand what the, the difficulty is. Like, just be done with it. And, like, what you said without... Did she say something about without feeling personal, without it being personal or whatever? She was talking about co-parenting okay. without taking things personally. I mean, is he going to be a good co-parent, though? Mm. Is he a good father? Mm-hmm. You, you don't even know, like, because you've been in the house with him, you don't even know how he's going to navigate parenthood without you being around to observe it and make sure everything's going smoothly. I don't know that situation, like, what type of father he is, but, I mean, let the courts decide. What? Now <laughs> <laughs> let the court decide. I'm for real, like, man. Oh my God. That was personal, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> y'all been together for five years. That's too long. He's still just your boyfriend. Y'all got two kids together and he cheated on you both times. I understand that y'all got, well, this emotional tie. Y'all have a family with one another. So I know it's easier said than done just to be like, I'm done. Let me get up out of here. Because obviously emotions are involved. And y'all do have two children with each other. But you going to have to pray your way up out of that when um, Miss Girl and ask God to detach them feelings away from you and make a plan and set a plan to separate yourself from this man. Uh, Because it's not, I already know it's not going to be something that you just going to be like, I'm done. Right. No, it's just not going to be that easy. But my advice and Mo's advice would be to leave him alone because if he can be that disrespectful with cheating on you, period. But then while you were pregnant, not once, but twice, girl, he don't give a damn about you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not you, not your well-being, not the well-being of y'all unborn kids. I don't even want to even think about the fact that he probably was sleeping with her and sleeping with you. Or who knows if it was. Because you only know what he told you. Exactly. And then if he was out here sleeping with other people while you were pregnant and it could have been unprotected and like, oh. And what if you would have found out been stressed out? That would have been, that would have caused problems with your pregnancy. You've been with him five years, two kids, and y'all not married. He does not want you. Mm-mm, no. He's still trying to see if he can find the one and have you on the side waiting until he find whatever it is, whatever type of conclusion he's trying to make in his own head. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on, but it just seems like given those facts, he does not want you. It does not take anybody that long to figure out what they want for their life. What is? Yeah. I mean, y'all already playing the role of husband and wife. So yeah. what would be the? That's something to consider too. Like, what are your goals? What do you want for yourself yeah. out of a relationship? Yeah, because if it's been five years and y'all got two kids, y'all done already put the court before the horse. Like, he doesn't have any incentive to want to propose because, like Monique said, y'all already plan house. So he has nothing to even work towards when it comes to you. And then when you said, um, if you do move on, how do you navigate co-parenting without taking things personally and boss up on him and find you again? Well, you need to find you, period. Right. You need to focus on you Don't and boss your up children. On boss up boss for, for you. yourself. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then as far as co-parenting, it's not going to be an easy process because you love this person and you are going to feel some type of way if you see him with somebody else or whatever the case may be. But that's something that you have to work through with time. But I wouldn't be arguing with him and asking him who he's seeing and this, this, that, and the third. The only thing that could be that should be your concern is y'all co-parenting relationship, how he treats your kids. And if he does end up dating somebody I would ask that you both make an agreement not to introduce anybody to your children unless it's 1,000% serious and that you yourself or he himself should meet the person before y'all introduce them to the kids, you know. But girl, I'm praying for you, girl. Let us know what you decide and what you decide on doing, girl, because that's a lot. Oh, God. Jeez. Okay, next question. It says, hi, Keisha. I'm one of your subscribers, and your video last night was hilarious, Sierra Theater. Thank you. I am 52 years old, and I was told I'm too old to start my clothing line. I wanted to get advice from someone who has top-notch style. Thanks. And creativity. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know anything about social media. I don't know how to even start, but I do have my samples and everything already done. I was wondering if I could speak to you about it. Maybe you can wear it 
It's a luxury loungewear line. I just need guidance. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Well, I would be happy to wear something of yours and give my critique or my advice to you. I mean, I don't know. I know a lot about the fashion industry, but my I myself have never designed anything really. But I don't think 52 is too old to do anything, child. You still breathing. You're still moving. Mm -hmm. What's stopping you? Like, don't let outside people and their opinions and stuff stop you from doing anything. Because a lot of people will want to keep you in the same place that you are because they are too afraid or don't want to exactly. move forward in life. And they want to see you remain stagnant. Keep but you in a box of what you've already been doing. Yeah, I would suggest, I know you don't know a lot about social media or anything. If you have a grandchild, a niece, a nephew, have them sit, you know, sit down with that person and have them teach you how to do an Instagram and all of that type of stuff. And you just literally have to sit down and teach yourself the business. If you can't afford to take a class or something, YouTube is your best friend, girl. You can learn how to do anything on YouTube, sure okay? Can. If they giving out degrees. <laughs> I mean, literally, you can literally go on YouTube and Google how to start a fashion line or whatever. You're going to find information on there. You can give advice on how the fact that Monique was in her, what, 30s when she started her cake business out of nowhere. And it was a huge success. She didn't ask nobody yeah. about their opinion. I literally started doing it because I was out of a job. I was doing it to pay bills. I never expected from I made a cake for my friend. She posted it on she posted it on Facebook and I did not have a free weekend for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> literally did not have a free weekend for eight. I am tired, honey. Yeah. And then like literally you ain't take no classes or nothing I like took, that. Like like basic stuff like how to level a cake, which anybody can figure out eventually. Like yeah. this should be level. Like I should probably get some of this off. <laughs> but yeah, she just but. used her natural God given talent mm -hmm. and the talent from her mom. And made a successful business where people still hound her to this day about doing cakes for her. She cannot stand it. <laughs> but if you know that you have something good here, girl, get out there and do it. You can start your own website for free. It doesn't even cost to do stuff like that. And it's, it's a way to do everything. You just got to do your research. And if you do want to send me something, inbox me on Instagram and I'll give you the information on where you can send it. So we are wishing the best for you and yes, do not give luck. up. Not. We want to see this in stores, okay? I don't care how hard it gets. I don't care about any critiques that you get. Just keep pushing. Keep Use it as constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Don't ever like think that you cannot make it. It's never too late. It's people that's in their 90s still going for doctorates and stuff. Sure. Like, it's never too late. And a luxury loungewear line sounds great. Because ain't nothing better for me. One of my favorite things in life, life is to go to Walmart Don't and laugh, get me a pair of brand new pajamas. Come home, take a bath, put on my brand new pajamas, curl up in my bed and watch a movie or read a book. And with some new house shoes, like that is fun for me. Like I'm old. <laughs> so just imagine having some really nice little lounge wear in the house. It just make you feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great idea, first of all. And you can get yourself on Amazon, girl. There's so many different ways. So yeah, prosper prosper we're looking forward to it hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of x keisha and mo we are back in our rhythm super excited to be back if you guys need advice over anything your relationship your mama your daddy your kids your job your health whatever your friends email us at askkeishaandmo at gmail.com and we will answer your questions please let us know in the email if you want to remain anonymous Love you guys and thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure to thumbs up this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on your post notifications so you know when my videos drop. I love you and I will see you on the next video. Peace.